In March of 2016, Apple launched the iPhone SE. This phone has a form factor of the iPhone 5 and 5S with the internals of an iPhone 6S. It has the same 4-inch screen and 58.6 millimeter width. Two years later, there exists no other phone in this form factor that is this powerful. Is the iPhone SE still worth it in 2018? Let's talk about it. First, let's talk about the specs. The weight, 113 grams. The dimensions, 123.8 by 58.6 by 7.6 millimeters. This 58.6 millimeter width, like I said before, is unmatched and beats any other smartphone by a long shot. The iPhone 6, 6S, 7, 7S, 8, and X all have widths greater than 67 millimeters. The closest flagship phone that even comes close is the Sony Xperia, and it has a 65 millimeter width and is not even available for carriers like Verizon and Sprint. The fingerprint sensor on this phone is a little slower than current models, but you wouldn't notice unless you used them side by side. It is the same speed as the iPhone 5 and 5S. It does lack the 3D touch capabilities of newer phones though, but I found that this is more of a gimmick anyways. To continue on the specs, it has an A9 dual core processor, 2 gigabytes of RAM, and a 6 core chip. It's much faster than the iPhone 5S and even faster than the iPhone 6. It matches the speed and performance of the iPhone 6S. As far as the price, Apple just stopped selling the iPhone SE on their website. That said though, you can purchase a brand new phone with 16 gigabytes and 32 gigabytes of storage on Amazon for $209.99 and $249.99 respectively. Or you can purchase a refurbished like new version for $149.99 for the 16 gigabyte model, $172.41 for the 32 gigabyte model, $204.25 for the 64 gigabyte model, and $269.99 for the 128 gigabyte model. I recommend getting the 64 gigabyte or 128 gigabyte model refurbished on Amazon if you can afford it. Now let's talk about the physical design and size. As I said before, the iPhone SE uses the same chassis and size as the iPhone 5S. It fits well in the hand and pocket, and my thumb can reach every corner of the screen without any difficulty. Larger phones require a phone shuffle to reach all four corners, increasing the risk for a dropped phone. I can't be the only one to think larger phones are cumbersome. Pop sockets, which are collapsible grips for iPhones and Androids, have become popular and are helping people with the ergonomics, but this is a band-aid, not a fix to the root cause. Some might argue that they prefer the large screen. If I'm going to use two hands to use my electronic device, I might as well up the screen size even more and use a tablet or a laptop. To expand upon the screen, in my opinion, a four inch screen is the perfect sized screen for people considering one-handed use. Why sacrifice a second hand for a very slightly larger screen? The screen does have a lower PPI of 326 pixels per inch than today's standards though. But because of this, just like I said in my MacBook Air review, the battery life excels. It could last almost two days on a single charge if needed. And one hour of charging brings the iPhone up to over 60%. We have to discuss the keyboard size though. Some might say that the keyboard on a 4-inch screen is difficult to use. I say no one was complaining when the average phone size was 3.5 inches. Also, I prefer to use gesture keyboards like Swipe and SwiftKey. Now we have to talk about the headphone jack. I can't believe I have to discuss this. Yes, the iPhone SE still has a 3.5mm headphone jack. You will not have to spend more money on a specialized lightning or USB-C headphone or Bluetooth headphones if you don't want to. You can use regular headphones. As far as performance goes, for a phone that is over two years old, I haven't noticed any slowdown. The A9 6-core processor still holds up perfectly today. iOS 9, 10, and 11 run just fine. 
Now let's talk about the camera. The iPhone SE has the same 12 megapixel that exists in the iPhone 6S. The camera is great, it is easy to use, and it's awesome. Word of warning though, by default, Live Photos is turned on. Disable this if you don't want a prompt to pay Apple $12 per year to upgrade your iCloud storage every few months. Regarding durability, I dropped the phone many times and had no issues. The metal case is very durable and much stronger than anything with a glass or plastic case. In conclusion, if you want a single-handed phone with great ergonomics, this is your best option. The camera is great, the battery life is great, and it is on sale at a decent price. I highly recommend it.